Two weeks have passed since that fateful day that Strider and his brothers had run into Dagger and for better or worse, got introduced to their new home, the territory of the Blades Pack. It had all happened so quickly, being led to their main den, meeting with the pack's leaders, while all the other group members stared at them with judging eyes. Strider and his bachelor group of four were technically accepted, but they had to prove themselves first, a process that could take months and was different for every clan. Having wanting to prove themselves, the young males were ready for hard labour, but were both surprised and a little underwhelmed when they were given the thankless duty of babysitting. An important duty of course, but one that was usually handled by younger members of the group, not adults that were fit for hunts. To make matters more degrading, they rarely swapped shifts with other members of their new pack. They had to stay on near constant guard this whole time. The adult members of the Blades would bring back food for the youngsters occasionally and tell the brothers where they had made a kill, but by the time they got to it, there was usually only scraps left. Now the brothers were hungry and annoyed, but perhaps this was part of the test. Patience and to see if they could protect the future generation. The young played or fought near constantly, always so full of energy. If Strider didn't have his brothers with him, there was no way he could keep track of them all, let alone collect and move them together. Their constant carelessness and demanding chirps grated Strider's nerves, and he had more than once considered eating one or two, if just to satiate his hunger. Of course, that would only lead to himself being killed by the other members of the Blades, once they smelt the blood of one of their own on his jaws. What kept his mind busy was the near ever-present threat of one different type of predator that was always seeking to snap up one of the infant Utah Raptors, Gemini Raptor. These small troodontids, only 1.5 meters long, were lightly built and shockingly quick but no threat to an adult Utah Raptor that could reach 6 meters long. But young Utah Raptor on the other hand were prime targets for the Gemini Raptor. Normally, Utah Raptor wouldn't even bother hunting such small prey, as the little hunters were far too agile for the bulky dromaeosaurs. However, Gemini Raptor often target the youngest members of the Utah Raptor clans, not just for food, but to reduce future threats and so adult Utah Raptor will sometimes kill Gemini Raptor as a form of retribution or to make an area safe for their young. Gemini Raptor also work together in mated pairs, and one has been harassing Strider and his brothers for days. No matter where the brothers shepherded the young, the two Gemini Raptors seem to always be close by, watching and stressing the adults, even though the young seemed oblivious. Even now, he could hear them scurrying in the undergrowth, or see one of their heads pop out of cover now and then, as if teasing the larger carnivores. So far, they hadn't managed to snatch a single one of the juveniles, and Strider had to admire and hate their tenacity. What they needed was a way to kill them, or scare them substantially enough that they would leave them alone for a few days. They needed a plan. The group sent Black back south to make a long trip around, far enough that the Gemini Raptor wouldn't see him. Thrasher and Strider then hid as best they could in the surrounding forest, while out in the open with the juveniles, they left Rough Guts, who kept the youngsters close to him, but pretended to be asleep. The trap was set, now they just had to wait and see if their targets would take the bait. Patiently, Strider and Thrasher laid completely still, listening out for any sign that the Gemini Raptor were going to attack. After ten minutes of only the occasional crackle of leaves or shifting of ferns, Strider heard a pair of fast-paced footsteps racing from between where Thrasher and himself were laying. Through the foliage, he could just make out the silhouette of one of the Gemini Raptor sprinting towards the young Utah Raptor. The juvenile squealed and ran towards Rough Guts, who was still pretending to be asleep. When the two Gemini Raptor were past Strider and Thrasher, both Utah Raptors rose up and chased after the smaller carnivores. Evidently their camouflage worked, and they didn't even notice them. As the pair of Gemini Raptor closed in on their targets, 
Roughgut sprang forward, mouth wide open, faster than either Gemini Raptor were expecting. As he moved to bite them, both bent their legs and sprung away from him in opposite directions. Roughgut's jaws slammed shut, just missing the pair. Now separated slightly, they turned tail, aiming to bolt back the way they came, but one came face to face with Strider, and the other with Thrasher. Strider swiped with his left hand, but the smaller dinosaur ducked under his feathered limb and between his legs, so Strider flicked his tail and swept the Gemini Raptor from beneath, momentarily grounding it. By the time Strider turned around, the Gemini Raptor was already back on his feet and the two got into a chase. Thrasher, on the other hand, bit at his Gemini Raptor, so the little hunter jumped up and landed on his back. Thrasher bit at the pest clinging to his back, but Roughguts got a little too eager and tackled Thrasher in his attempts to get the Gemini Raptor. Both Utah Raptor crashed unceremoniously into the ground, while their target sprinted to safety. The Gemini Raptor that was being chased by Strider was only a few paces ahead. He had to get to cover or outrun the Utah Raptor, and both seemed possible. Then, from out in front of him, a fourth Utah Raptor lunged at him from the tree line. It was Blackback, arms outstretched, ready to grab the little target. Using his signature ability, the Gemini Raptor jinxed to the right, and within a second was running back at full speed. Strider and Blackback both nearly ran into each other, but the brothers managed to swerve just sharply enough to avoid a head-on collision. They then both ran after the Gemini Raptor, but as it scuttled back into the undergrowth, the siblings lost it, and only a fading rustling remained. The plan was that by sending Blackback on a long loop around, he could cut the Gemini Raptor off when they retreated back the way they came, and though it technically worked, the brothers had nothing to show for it. With that being said, it was by far the closest they had come to catching either of them, and it was likely the scared duo wouldn't try anything for at least a couple of days. Roughguts and Thrasher were fighting now, which wasn't a surprise to Strider, but Blackback moved in to break them up. Despite everything, the young were safe, and actually seemed entertained by the two siblings going at it, so in reality, today was a success. Distant barks signaled the arrival of the rest of the pack. Soon they would get something to eat, and a short break, but for now, Strider had to report to the one in this pack he considered an ally, Dagger. Story continued after the facts section of the video. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the smallest residents of the Sedare Mountain Formation, Gemini Raptor. The one and only fossil of Gemini Raptor consists of a maxilla, discovered in the Sedare Mountain Formation in 2010. It lived in Utah during the early Cretaceous between 139 and 134 million years ago. Gemini Raptor is estimated to have grown to 1.5 meters in length stood 50 centimeters high, and weighed between 2 and 9 kilograms. It belonged to the Troodontidae family, and is the oldest member discovered in North America, being the first from the early Cretaceous. As one of the earliest of its kind, Gemini Raptor has both basal and derived traits for a Troodontid, so let's take a closer look at that maxilla. Like later species, the maxilla is long and low, with the process above the antorbital fenestra being horizontal. However, it also has a promaxillary fenestra, and a narrow interfenestral strut seen in younger species. Though most of the teeth are missing, Gemini Raptor is estimated to have had 19 teeth in its upper jaw. Interestingly, the tooth sockets are square-shaped, and are separated by small walls of bone, a trait mostly seen in basal troodontids. The teeth themselves were small and blade-like, effective at cutting through flesh and likely used on small prey and carrion. The environment Gemini Raptor lived in is believed to have been semi-arid, with floodplain, prairies, riverine forests and open woodlands, so plenty of different biomes for a small opportunist. Some of the species that lived alongside include Gastonia, Iguana Colossus, and Mierosaurus. Unfortunately, there's not a lot to go off of Gemini Raptor, as we only have the one fossil, but its mere discovery is important for filling in the gaps of this formation's ecosystem, 
as well as the troodontid family tree. At under 2 meters long, Gemini Raptor was likely a fast, lightweight, and flexible predator. And if it's as smart as the rest of its family is assumed to be, it's fair to say that it was quite efficient and cunning as well. Troodontids would have had a wide range of prey from small reptiles, early mammals, carrion, and infant dinosaurs. Given how agile and light they were, it's easy to see them scaling trees to go after anything out of reach of larger, heavier predators, such as birds or nests. On the opposite side, however, Gemini Raptor was at the size where it would have been prey for larger carnivores like Utah Raptor, as the little troodontid was nowhere near the top of the food chain. But what do you think of Gemini Raptor? And for my question of the week, do you believe that Gemini Raptor and other troodontids would go after reptiles more than mammals, or vice versa? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please enjoy the rest of the narration section. Another successful day? Dagger asked. All the young are safe and healthy. Strider replied for what felt like the 50th time since he joined the Blades Pack. Good, good. Keep this up and maybe one day you'll be a usable as bait. The older raptor trailed off, pushing Strider's patience. Is your test just to see how easily we are willing to be pushed around? Or do you perhaps want us to speak up? To gauge whether we have the guts to push back against our orders. Which is it, Dagger? Do you want blind obedience, or members that have useful opinions? Strider tried to keep his voice level, but the frustration was a little too evident. Dagger turned and looked Strider dead in the eye, his expression unclear, but Strider, for his part, held his ground. All of the above, I suppose. I'm not the Alpha, but we all have our responsibilities. Since you seem so eager, why don't you show us your hunting skills tomorrow? Nothing too big, but something to prove you're worth. Dagger responded, sounding non-fussed. Strider sighed, feeling his pent-up aggression leave him, with the promise of no more babysitting, for the foreseeable future at least. One more thing, Dagger. I see you aren't the Alpha, but it appears you do most of the work in this clan. Why don't you and your mate challenge for leadership? Strider asked, hoping he wasn't crossing the line with a Utah Raptor he barely knew. Dagger looked up at the night sky, and Strider followed his gaze. They both stared at the stars for a while, before Dagger finally responded. Becoming an Alpha isn't the only thing in this life, Strider. And without another word, Dagger turned and moved back towards the sleeping area, leaving Strider alone his words having more impact on the young Utah Raptor than Strider would have admitted.